Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. What can I say about this game other than it's one of my all-time favorite Zelda games? Hell, one of my favorite games, period. Now, I could talk for hours about why I love this game. I'll try to keep it short, but first I'm going to talk about something that I don't like. And it's not in the game, it's the commercial. In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend. The commercial for this bright and colorful game is dark and family. foggy. And I know this is a low-quality video I'm showing, but even when I saw this commercial on TV, I was not impressed. It didn't make me want to play the game. It talks about Hyrule, but the game doesn't even mention Hyrule until halfway through. My least favorite part is this line. All to fulfill his destiny. Which is, above all else, to save me. It just doesn't sit right with me. Anyway, let's get started. First things first, let's talk about the first thing you look at when you see this game. The graphics. I think the graphics in this game fit perfectly with its tone. I know they are cartoonish, but the game uses it to its advantage. There are things you can do in a cartoon environment that you just can't do in a more realistic game. I'll talk about that a little bit more before the video's over, but right now I want to talk about the gameplay and then talk about the story. The gameplay is very similar to Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. There are a few play mechanics that have been added though. You control Link the same way as you do in the Nintendo 64 games, but now you have the ability to crawl at any time. Also, there is a new mechanic called sidling, which you can do on most walls. This is required to gain access to certain areas, but I usually just do it because it's fun. Sword fighting is also advanced a bit in this game. There are still the basic horizontal, vertical, and thrust attacks, a spin attack, and a jump attack. But in addition to these, there are new moves called parry attacks. They are triggered when an enemy attacks, and there are two kinds, a jumping parry and a rolling parry, depending on how the enemy attacks. Also, this game allows you to pick up the fallen weapons of your enemies, but certain enemies also have this ability. The items in Wind Waker are pretty par for the course as far as Zelda games go, with two exceptions, the Grapple Hook and the Deku Leaf, or Deku Leaf if you prefer, but I really don't care. Both of these items are new and unique to this game. The Grapple Hook allows you to hook onto grapple points and swing or climb. It also can be used to steal items from enemies. I find that it's most useful for collecting spoils from enemies that don't always drop them. The Deku Leaf, on the other hand, uses magic power to glide through the air, and blow air, which has its own uses. Alright, let's talk about the story. The game starts out with a legend passed down by the people. It basically goes over the story of Ocarina of Time but adds that once the hero vanishes, Ganon reappears, and the people of Hyrule pray to the goddesses, and what do they do? Well, they flood the land and turn it into an endless ocean. And that's where we enter, Outset Island. Link is sleeping, nothing new, but then he is woken by his sister, Ariel. You see Grandma, get the iconic green tunic, and a telescope from Ariel. You look through it and see that a girl is being taken by a giant bird and a pirate ship is chasing her. The pirates manage to knock the bird out, causing the girl to fall down into the forest of the island. And what do you do? Well, what any boy Link's age would do. You gear up, get a sword, and cut down some trees to save her. You rescue the girl, who you learn is named Tetra, and exit the forest. Once you lead the forest, you have a new problem, though. 
the monster bird that took Tetra grabs your sister. You're determined to save her. So, you get yourself a shield, you say goodbye to Grandma, and you're off. The game obviously is not just about rescuing her. Though, it is the reason you start your journey. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Oh, I swear to God, you have no idea how long it took me to get this damn microphone to work on. Okay, oh, Nevit, feel free to leave all this shit in, okay? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Okay, so what I remember most from Wind Waker, you understand now, is that it was highly animated with the facial expressions, you know what I'm saying? As in, it told most of the story through the characters' faces, then the text, you know what I'm saying? I recall back in the old days, there was a fella on GameSpot back in the old days when actually they had good reviews, and he brought that to my attention, and I thought, well, you know, well, that's pretty cool. Now, I don't know if you already uh, mentioned that in your uh, little video, because I didn't really, you know, look at the script, but I'm just saying, oh, hey, dude, you gotta dig this new song I just learned, and feel free to leave this in the video. Okay, here we go. Yeah. And now back to the program, which is already in progress. Okay, now I have to say this even though the game is over 10 years old, and there's an HD remake on the Wii U, this video does contain some spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers for a 10 plus year old game, stop the video now, buy the HD remake, and play it. Okay, so on to some spoilers. I want to talk about Tetra. As we all know, Tetra is Princess Zelda. Who would have guessed it? Well, unlike most Zelda games, Princess Zelda is not a princess, or at least doesn't start out as one. I know Zelda in Ocarina of Time was also chic, but that was a disguise. In Wind Waker, Tetra is the only life she knew until, boom, Ancestor's ghost magically changes her into a princess. But before you learn all that, Tetra is the leader of a group of pirates. She has attitude and kind of kicks ass. Kind of. There are a lot of characters in this game. Some very memorable ones. But what makes these characters great is that every single one has a name and a story. Most are simple, but some are a little more complex. There's a side quest that involves the Picto Box that allows you to make figurines of characters and enemies. The figurines give you information on every character, which I always loved. It added a depth to the characters that you wouldn't have otherwise. Before I go any further, I want to talk about the HD remake on the Wii U. I was really excited when they announced it. It added to the game without taking away the feel of the original. The HD graphics are great, I especially like the way the shadows are done. With the Wii U gamepad you can access your items with great ease. The Wind Waker has been set to the D-pad, which makes it easy to access without taking up an item space. When you're at sea, your sail is set to the A button, and your left and right D-pad buttons are used for the cannon and salvage arm. This makes the transition from being on an island to sailing seamless. The HD version also made the figurine side quest much easier. In the original game, the Pictobox held only three pictographs, and Karloff, the figurine maker, could only make one at a time. This means you'd have to be playing the Song of Passing six times in a row and only get three figurines. In Wind Waker HD, the pictograph can take 12 pictographs. You can tell if they're good enough to make figurines as soon as you take them, and Karloff can create up to 12 with just playing the Song of Passing two times. 
This makes the process much faster. One improvement that a lot of people were talking about when Wind Waker HD first came out was the shortening of collecting the Triforce pieces. They did this by removing some of the Triforce charts and just collecting the Triforce piece without having to pay to get a chart deciphered. And perhaps the most useful addition to the game would have to be the swift sail. Basically, it speeds up your sailing, making traveling from island to island much faster. The swift sail also changes the direction of the wind to whatever direction you're facing, meaning that you don't have to use the wind's requiem every time you want to change direction. But let's get back to talking about the game itself and not the changes with the HD remake. One thing that I really want to talk about this game is the boss battles. And I can sum that up in one word. Big. Every boss in this game is huge. I know the Zelda series is full of big bosses, but in Wind Waker, it is chock full of them. They all dwarf Link, and I know Link is small in this game, but that just adds to the mood that makes this world seem like this big place, which it is. The most human-sized boss in this game is Ganondorf, and even he is more than twice the size of Link. And I have to say, this boss fight is really cool. The mood is just perfect. The water rushing around you gives the feel of impending doom. The music is epic. And the progression of the battle is nice. I especially like the way Zelda actually fights against Ganondorf. She takes up arms and takes a punch. Damn, Ganon, you a dick. Of course, you have to love the end. Did... Did Link just stick his sword into his skull? Link is a... Badass! No, no, no. Let, let's... Let's think about this. Link is a badass. He doesn't care how big an enemy is. He'll take them all on. Every single one of them. He doesn't care. Heavily guarded fortress? No problem. He might have fought this idea at first, but a barrel launch from a catapult really was the only way in. And who needs swords? Not Link. He lets that shit go flying. Gives him a chance to sneak through the place, and Link really digs that shit. Once he's done, he's pecked up like a bug by a bird as big as a battleship. A bird. A bird as big as a battleship. Then he's thrown miles away. And when that happens, what does he do? He takes a nap. Now that's gangster. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. But that's not the only thing that makes Link a badass. Personal property? Link says fuck that shit. He throws it on the ground. Sees a jailed individual? You break that man out. Justice system be damned. Also, he knows a pimp. Now that's pimp. But Link isn't afraid of any pimp. Pimp doesn't like postman? You become the postman. You take the letters. You deliver the letters. And once you're done that, you sort the letters. Just for fun. Explosions! Man, there are so many explosions. And look at that guy dancing! That's kinda cool. Alright, but seriously, Wind Waker is one of my favorite games. I think that everyone should play it. Uh, people originally thought that the graphics were a little corny, but now, I don't think anyone can say that they're unattractive. I think it's one of the best styles the Zelda series could have chosen. I think the art style is just really well done in this game. And if you haven't had a chance to check it out, you should totally do it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you rate and share this video. Have a nice day.